Well, sure. So the last two times I drafted a hunter, I immediately turned around and and drafted a much more successful death knight, which was depressing. But this time I drafted an unsuccessful death knight, so maybe I can turn around and get a successful hunter. Eh? Surely if I just reverse the pattern. I don't know if arms dealer is that good in hunter. Doesn't look like it is. The win rate's like the lion's guard marginally. They like arms dealer least. I don't really appreciate this as a first pick because... I have no idea what we're working with yet. Whether we're gonna have undead or not. Alright, heard on all counts, DJ. Thank you, Hero Makio69. Nice. Welcome to the fun dungeon. <clears throat> okay. So, are there any high profile fives in Hunter that we would want to save room for the way we do in Shaman? Or the way we do now in Warlock, now that the that one reborn revive card is actually five mana now? Uh, there's the Tarantula. Tarantula is a big one. That would be a reason to keep five clear. Although you don't typically get too many of those. Otherwise, I can't think of a lot. Shock Spitter got nerfed. You mean again? <laughs> the guy can't, cannot catch a break. Um, I don't think that the nerf actually affects that much this time. Well, it's 4 mana, but its stats got buffed. So it's like not that much worse than before. And the way that you use Shock Spitter in Arena typically is going to be waiting until you've had a bunch of weapon swings then using it. So I, I don't really know that that 1 mana jump will affect it as much as the first nerf did. Is my guess. But yeah, still kind of annoying. Still nerfing the hunter and buffing Death Knight. Love to see it. Oh god damn it. Panther's fine. It's a beast, it's stealth. Big champion. I don't like Freezing Trap right now, but... <laughs> Whoa, what? I was gonna pick Hush as the movie today, but there are literally only three quotes from the movie online. I mean, maybe if you... Maybe if you're picking... Recognizable quotations, maybe the movie about... A mute protagonist is not the the, the place to go for me. <laughs> what was the first nerf? It was two mana originally, right? What have you tuned into? I don't know, man. You tell me. What is the what is the actual pick here? I think it's not Rat King. Rat King is not as scary as it once was. It feels pretty surmountable. So get that out of the way. <laughs> I 
Maybe I'm wrong about that though, because it has the same win rate as Ysera, and actually the weapon has the lowest, but they're all pretty close together, so we could probably just take whatever we feel like. Yeah, we could take Hope because it's a new card. Like, if we want to win, Ysera might be the way to go, but honestly, Hope comes out way sooner. And it actually justifies our Lion's Guard pick. Because we're probably going to be taking more damage with a Hope deck. And then also buffing our Lion's Guard so it's even huger. <laughs> um, what the Conjured Arrow here? It's one of the best cards in the class. We don't have any weapons yet, so... Oh! A tip for Mblobby taking the new card. I'd off my cap to you. I'd off my cap. We take Shock Spitter here? I don't know, man. In some ways, a 4-mana 3-3 three, three feels a little better than a 3-mana 2-2. Two, two. We have to assume we'll get something, by the way, of weapons. Right? Right? Right. Well, I mean, we have this weapon. It's only two swings, though, but it's a start. So, looking for beasts could be important with Shock Spitter in deck. We take Bloody Ay, yay, yay, Sentinel's so good, though. And imagine, like, a buffed Sentinel, but also imagine a buffed Bloody Knight. I've had the... I think in Hunter you want the Knight. <laughs> I think in Hunter you want the Knight. Happy to see rats. Happy to see more mug shot. Um, we have a lot of like reactive spells. I think we could go for. We might have a decent amount of cards in our hand with this deck. It looks very controlly, but guards probably fine. Another mug shot. Triple mug shot is pretty dope. I really don't want the Forge Fiend. Um, is it Foul Egg? This can shoot Foul Egg. This, I guess, is nice with it. You could Mark Shot an Egg, I suppose. Guard is good. Hope is good. Stormwind's good. Yeah, I'll take the Egg. <laughs> I'm really down on my work. Um... Lately, and especially in this class. You think it's Forge Fiend there? The last thing I want is another Chungus right now. Like, our deck becomes Chungus on its own. We don't need to draft Chungus, eh? Like, this is Chungus, this is Chungus, this is Chungus, this is Chungus, this is Chungus. We don't need more Chungus. We need Curvus. Venom Strike? I guess the argument for Forge Fiend would be armor, but that's far from a guarantee because there's a good amount of silence floating around. With the weapon it's okay, but didn't see many egg activators. What? How did you not see many egg activators? It's like a significant chunk of our deck. 
Got Conjured Arrow for Egg Activator. I mean, I already went over this, but I'll point out again. Conjured Arrow, in a way, you could consider Merchant. Um, Stormwind Guard, Hope. Stormwind Champion. That's five guaranteed activators, and then you, even in a pinch, could Mark Shot it if you don't have anything else to do with Mark Shot. Or Shock Spit. So, like, half of our deck can activate it right now. If I've seen it, Hero Makio, sure. I watch less TV than film, but if I have seen it, I'll rate it for you. Death Rattles. So we have the egg. Anything else? Currently, no. But this is a pretty rubbish bucket, so we could probably... Probably go pair it just in case we get more upside. Is one unit of TV an entire run of a show? Like one rating unit? Yeah, it would be. I suppose you could request a specific episode, but that's really... That's really testing my memory at that point. Rodent's Nest is good. We have another death rattle now. Also, a nice, um... Or drop in case we want to actually play something on 4 rather than just shoot something. I really like... Sentinel. Arcane Quiver means we will basically have endless draws, right? You just discover Conjured Arrows and... But you might not get Conjured Arrow every time because we actually have decent variety of spells. We have like five different spells. A claim to have seen more film than TV got me thinking about how we categorize and judge differently based on repetition and seriality and continuity and such across many hours of TV versus standalone films. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my... I have not seen The Last of Us. My claim to have seen a lot less TV than film. You're right, may may not be accurate when you count up hours spent watching. In fact, it probably isn't. But the reason I frame it that way is when somebody is redeeming a review they're ideally looking for me to have seen the thing, and proportionally, it's way more likely that I'll have seen a movie they've seen than a TV show they've seen. So I think of it... Quay... Likelihood to get your request... Build to your liking. <laughs> Whoever with two conjured errors is kind of tempting. Right. Yeah, we, we've, we've talked about that. We had that discussion. About 25 seconds ago. But is it tempting enough to pass a Sentinel? A 3, which we need. A 3 that scales very well. A 3 that could benefit from getting buffs from the hope of Kelthalos? I feel like we are- Ah, oh, man. I feel like we have a lot of spells already. We want to make sure we have some minions to get buffs, right? And, and, you know, what good is a million billion ways to draw cards if we're dying on board? Like, this might have to be the Huntress, even though Doggy Biscuit's a better card. Like, what are we gonna buff with Doggy Biscuit? We just don't- we don't play anything on two. We need to at least hit three. At least. And we could hit it with a free secret, which... I suppose is possible. I'll take another Conjured Arrow, but we- we- Oh, Sure. 
Alright, so if I knew I was gonna get back-to-back -back candle shots, I would've taken the Kenai, but I'm not gonna complain about back-to-back -back candle shots. Alright, our curve is shoring up here. We just fixed one. I'll take another guard, I think. Last pick. Yeah, that's a good last pick there. We could consider the wolf as well, though. Like, it's just a solid peasant. Really solid, nice to play on to. It will be only our... third or fourth two drop, depending on if you count the breeder. Um, this is some Donkey Kong Country music. What's up, Montauk? Toxic Arrow, yeah. I compared Toxic Arrow to Conjured Arrow. Which arrow do you prefer? <laughs> yeah. It's hard to get more goat than a DK soundtrack. Very interesting draft. I think we didn't manage to get the curve where I wanted it to be, but the card quality is incredible, so we might have a pretty strong control hunter going on here. And I'm pretty sure the 12 Hunter I got in this meta was similarly controlly, so... I don't know. I can't evaluate decks properly anymore, but... Maybe we have something on our hands. First quote challenge... Incoming. That's a... That's a very specific combo, Mark. That would be so funny to achieve that combo, but... It's not really something you could expect in Arena. A lot of things have to go exactly right. Ugh. Oopla. You don't damage the 1 4. This is kind of a good card. It's it's really annoying in the early game. Oh, but Blobby, if you like this card, why didn't you take the other 3 mana 1 4 you were offered today? I don't know! Because that card's worse. Try to catch me in a trap? You try to catch me in a trap? <laughs> Alright, first quote for the CJ challenge. What kind of person would be so arrogant as to presume the intention of another human being? Now, now keep in mind, CJ would prefer you to keep your guesses to yourself. This is a challenge for old Blobby. But if you know what it is, you can say that you'd know. What kind of a person would be so arrogant as to presume the intention of another human being? Initially, I, I don't know this quote. So I'm gonna have to think about it.
Remember to keep your guesses to yourselves. Now, this can go here, and that's if this, after this minion survives damage, okay? So we can actually, and I think I like this, we can just sort of trip trade, let the 5-4 get picked up with Freezing Trap, and probably never come back. What kind of person would be so arrogant as to presume the intention of another human being? Hmm. That whirlwind effect is looking kind of good, huh? Bet they have to send it into the taunt anyway. A person would be so arrogant as to presume the intention of another human being. We got lethal. With that. Draw me. <laughs> um great <laughs> well sure I mean, I don't, maybe I'm missing some way that we could have gotten lethal, but I think if I was just kind <laughs> of do this for now. <laughs> Stupid turn. I'm struggling here, CJ. I'm gonna go off the wall. I, I don't even know if you've seen this movie, but I'm gonna say Knives Out as my first guess. I don't necessarily think it's right, but gotta guess something. It sure showed me. I guess we could get two beasts if we want to. That was the last thing, right? Or we could put this down. Get one beast and put this down. I mean, that's nice to have. I guess I wish we could hero power here, but... Whatever.
All right, so Owl, I'm, I'm, I think that's lethal. I'm just going to not even, not even worry about it. Boom. He's hearing the voice of God through a crossword puzzle. Feels like I should know this. Nope, it's from a game called Mini Metro, which I quite enjoy. Against Paladin, I think I like the Freezing Trap. Could, could, uh... Could punch back one of their buffed minions, potentially. Alright, he's hearing the voice of God through a crossword puzzle. Okay, uh, my idea here is trade. Do we re I, I want to f like freezing traps good for tempo, do but do we really want the warhorse back in their hand? Thank you, John. Deny to deny deny heal synergies. Well, what heal synergy would that be? Other than, like, Bartender, <laughs> which is irrelevant. Does Paladin have something like that right now? I, I also think we put it back in their hand. It's just worth considering. It's too good on tempo. My, my notion is if they decide to just play dudes and sit, we could just mark shot, right? My water. My water. Oh. Hello. Yeah, Spellstone is not around, so I don't I don't really think about healing against Paladin. Hey yeah. Uh... Point in sixes next turn. Oh my god. Spoiled for choice. <clears throat> you know, I'm gonna make another guess and 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 I don't know if you've seen this movie either. 
CJ. Well, I, I don't think it's from this movie. Hmm. I'm, I'm tying myself in knots here. Don knots. What's in you? A war horse? Happy Ghoul is actually in, but yeah, we're not worried about that. I guess we just go I main here. Pretty solid. I was thinking about Candle Shot mount, but then you can't play Kel'Thalas right away. I was even thinking about coin Kel'Thalas to hit and then value trade. But the Warhorse would still kill your 3-1. Good lord. What the hell's going on here, man? There are many lines here as well. You could do candle shot guard. I don't really like delaying our Kel'Thalas. But I feel like getting Ramming Mount down now is pretty strong. That's strong too! How many buffs you got? Jeez. trade hit clear um all right I'm, I'm gonna have to make a guess here so let me give it like one more turnaround in my head and then i'll just say something he's hearing the voice of god through a crossword puzzle i try to think of what that would be Four, seven, ten, twelve, thirteen. Mm. Honestly, kill that, kill this, kill this. Yeah, that's right. Victory is mine. Ba, 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 ba. That looks really strong so far. 
I'm excited. I don't know. I'm gonna say a serious man, but I don't think it is a serious man. But that's gonna be my guess. Okay, you, 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 all of you are gone. You're fired. So I'm thinking it's gonna be no reward for me today. Can't know everything. <laughs> Consolation quote, oh wow. How generous. Well, we probably want the... Shock spitter, frankly. Ah, give me that. I'm crying. I'm crying. I'm crying. I tried a new product, and it's good. This is the new product I tried. Dulce de leche toast crunch. It's really tasty, actually. <clears throat> the pictures on the cereal box are supposed to make you feel happy, but I feel sad. I think the time you forgot to pick me up at school. What the hell is this? The hell could it be? Jungle Panther here, or do we play a 3-4? Yeah, I think the Jungle Panther's right here. Merchant could very well be quite a bit stronger later. The pictures on the cereal box are supposed to make you feel happy. I feel sad like the time you forgot to pick me up at school. I guess we could keep that stealthed if we're looking to guard next turn. If we kill it, it's less likely they can kill this, but I don't know, maybe we just want that to be stealthed. It's all- these are like melancholy quotes which makes me think of Charlie Brown. I don't think it's a Charlie Brown thing. Cause like... They don't talk to adults in Charlie Brown, so it wouldn't be Charlie Brown. Hmm. Blood boil. Wow, okay. Alright. Interesting choice.
Might have to shock spit that next turn. Eh. And this is a film. This is a feature film, CJ. Hundred arrow. I, I wouldn't. This is not. It's not like a high priority to kill. So I guess we could just conjure it. I mean, we could shock spitter. Let's draw cards. Okay, well this actually works very sensibly. Currently Parrot gets Foul Egg out. I guess we could have just played Parrot and gotten that. I'm probably gonna be a tad rankled when you tell me. I probably am. So it's like clearly a kid. It's clearly a kid talking. It's not like the Incredibles or anything. I would remember that. Do we want one three three or five one ones? Probably five one ones. I don't know. But no, we actually just want one three three because we don't have the board space for five one ones. I guess the hero power is a bit irrelevant. Maybe we should have played Huntress instead on the coin. Yeah. It's a kid. I don't know, Matilda. <laughs> That's my guess. Oh god. <laughs> Hit me with that lady in the water trivia. <laughs> well done. Well done on the stump. Wow. Many ways to accomplish victory here. I guess we'll just Stormwind Champ. Maybe Rats is even smarter, but... But this puts so much damage in that we could probably just win with Shock Spitter next turn. Yeah, Paul Giamatti. I thought you'd get the cereal box, but admittedly, I don't know when you last saw that movie. Dude, it's probably been over a decade. Yeah, um, I don't even remember that scene. I don't even really remember there being a child in the movie. Did Paul Giamatti have a kid? I thought he was like living alone. I know there was the guy with the one buff arm. We're still close to lethal, but we're not quite there. So... So let me do... Rats? I 
I did this in a kind of a weird way. Whatever. Overdraw one card. Fair enough. It honestly, given given the strength of this deck and the other really good hunter I had a while ago, it feels like control hunter is the way to build hunter in this meta. It was the father who did crosswords and his kid they thought was the seer, so the kid tried to read the cereal box. Yeah, it's vaguely coming back to me here. The first quote, I, I also have absolutely no memory of where that would have been in the movie. The movie had some ideas behind it, but what a mess. Yeah, Control Hunter, good. You have to get a little lucky to hit triple Mark Shot and triple Conjured Arrow. That's a bit obscene. Well, we hit it. I remember really trying to like that movie. Showman Guard, pretty sweet draw. I don't know that I really want to trade anything here. Our health total is alarming. Bloodlust. Is it ever on curve bloodlust to put them at two off lethal? <laughs> it could be. Uh, the Death Knight went five, yes. Curve Bloodlust. We'd be able to meet it with Lion's Guard at least, but the problem is we actually are dead to on curve bloodlust because we wouldn't be able to kill our bloodied knight, which is really funny. <laughs> okay, Avalanche. Still gotta break through the taunt. You gonna kill my 4-2? Our pivot to Smork. Oh, they're still smorking though. Oh, they're gonna shoot that, okay. Well, I appreciate the extra smirk. It lets us do this. We have to do three and three, though. It's the same amount of power out. Maybe that's actually smart.
Little Miss Sunshine. I was just thinking of Little Miss Sunshine because there was a Twitter thread of people sharing movies with performances by men with a lot of screaming that they thought were actually good rather than just needlessly aggressive. And somebody brought up Paul Dano in Little Miss Sunshine. He is a teenager at the time, playing a teen, who had taken a vow of silence and refused to break that vow until he succeeded in his goal of flying for the Air Force. He wanted to fly jets. Something happens with that dream, and he like freaks out in a car, and they have to pull over, and he's like screaming and having a panic attack, and it's a really, really strong piece of performance work from Paul, uh, a young Paul Dano, who has succeeded in building an entire career out of being a real creepy son of a gun. Thank you for removing my self damage. His breakout role was in Little Miss Sunshine and probably his least creepy role, actually. Pretty sympathetic. I think he, he gets pigeonholed a lot. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. That oughta be it, right? 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Boom. Based aim shot. Didn't even have to play this Lion's Guard. Yeah, their, their Smork idea, I mean, maybe they had to win soon or never with their deck, I don't know, but it really wasn't working. He was indeed the Riddler, yeah. Anyway, Little Miss Sunshine is an... It's, it's kind of a blessed indie comedy. It's an indie comedy that was blessed by the gods to feature... Just an absolute glut of phenomenal performances. Like it's got it's got young up and comers before they make it big, like Paul Dano. It's got um, like really established legendary actors like Tony Collette. Uh, it's got actors who were known for their shallow comedy trying to make a more nuanced pivot, like Steve Carell, and they all come together and perform beautifully and. That's really the bread and butter of a, um, like a travel log, like a vacation comedy, the way that this movie is. You, you need to have a strong foundation of acting for movies like this to actually be charismatic, rather than just boring. And Little Miss Sunshine pulls it off really well. Four out of five blobs, probably. It makes quenching my bloodied night a lot worse, huh? I'm gonna try something a bit silly here. Jeez. I guess Swarm. Get my Shock Spitter back. I'm gonna play- I'm gonna coin the Scoundrel and then I'm gonna poke the 5-4. I'm gonna try to make them paranoid that I'm gonna do something to this minion so that they trade into my 2-3. In a way it worked. In a way it worked. But why do I feel so sad? Right, because you ruined my shock spitter, damn it! Yeah, a little, a lot of little tragedies in, in Little Miss Sunshine. Which is probably the best way to build a comedy with a lot of little tragedies along the way. Um, but it's about a girl who really wants to enter a beauty pageant, and there's some, there's some, like, kind of on-the-nose commentary about, like, body image and stuff like that. Like, 
but but it's it's just such a such a strong movie, so well written and well acted that you can forgive some of the cliches. You're just like still pumping your fist when the family comes out to defend the girl from the nasty judges or whatever whatever it was. And it all pivots around this really great bit with the grand the like dirty old grandfather being the one to actually choreograph her dance because he's the only one who like really pays any attention to the little girl everyone's all everyone else is caught up in their own worlds and that bit has a has a great payoff anyway good movie The play actually did make a lot of sense. I was worried because I was on the rope, but I'm looking at it, it makes sense. The only thing is you would like to get the web spinner down, but... We're doing good, we just have to not die. That's the main thing. Okay, gargoyle. We are dying though, we are dying though, we are dying though, how do we not die? Start here. Three bodies down to maximize the odds that the damage goes into a body and not my damn face is what we do. Good. Two, four, five, six, seven. So they could put us to five. That's horrible, dudes. <laughs> oh man. They can put us to four, and they could put us to two. Uh, so not only would we need to find Taunt, but we'd also have to find some sort of healing, which unless it's Vizier off the top, it's not happening. OTK time? You think we could do it? I don't think so. Four, seven, nine, thirteen, fifteen. We get halfway there. <laughs> Whoa! Not it. Hang on. Are there any beasts that... Uh, life drinker? Is that a beast?
So now we need the discover. Dude. It's so sad, man. Look at this. Here. If they did have that... Uh, we could have set up lethal if they didn't have the... Oh, man. If they did have that one damage from the candle shot. There could have been a way to put a huge taunt out and, and maybe set up a lethal. It's so close. Yep, that's the way to beat our deck. Hard and fast. Okay, these two can go, these two can stay. I like it, I like it. You could keep Parrot, actually. 4 mana, 3, 4 with a 2-2 two, two inside. I'm down. Wouldn't be inside, it would be outside, but you get the picture. Sweet. Many death rattles to choose from for our parrot. I don't think Freezing Trap's really what you want against that particular minion. Vicious Scale Hive. <laughs> That's a way to stop from bleeding damage, I guess. Hang on. I guess this is where we play Rodin's Nest. Not the beast I was looking for. Look at that thing. So cute. Um, I'll trade to get this Death Rattle in the pool first, because I, I assume we would rather have the 5 one ones than the single 2 do. Now, I, I I guess they're probably gonna trade the 5-5 five five into the poison. Yeah. That's a fair trade. A 2 for a 2, in a way. In a way... I wonder if I should have traded in my rodent's nest earlier. 
So you don't really want to trade the Rodent's Nest and then play Parrot. So probably equipping the Hope next turn. I mean, if they pop our Rodent's Nest, it's a good Hope. Heather on a 3-4, okay. Wow, alright. I'm gonna do something... <laughs> Am I gonna do it? No, 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 no. Ah, uh, we just smork like this. This is the way. So much more deck movement in Hunter than Death Knight, depending on... ...whether you hit the power cards. Okay. Sure. Still lightly annoyed that we can't pop this and then buff, but... It's all good. This is almost a full capacity, even though it's not active. Painted Zealot's a nice way to get our Freezing Trap out of the way. We could even do something with spell damage first. She's like, yeah. That's cool art too, I, I miss the old style of Hearthstone art. Way more compelling. Okay. They just play the Z. <laughs> they blast Crystal by ass and play a four mana Z. <laughs> How did they do that on turn 7? One of nature's mysteries, I guess. I don't even remember what's in here. Um, just a 2-2, I suppose? I might just take it, man. We ever marked shot the 1-1? One -one? It was turn 8. Why does it say 7 then? Just a bug? Oh, dummy, dumb blob, dummy, dumb, 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 dumb blob. Of course, he lost a crystal. I don't think we marked shot though, 1 1. It, it, that waiting on this value is not that important. I'm just gonna rip, rip the trigger. You could definitely argue that this is an overcommitment, but we do have a death rattle on board that's sticky, and we have this to generate value, and we have a lot of value generators in deck. Three Conjured Arrows, a Nerubian Vizier, a Selective Breeder, two Mark Shots, a Volpera Scoundrel, and even that our top end is pretty good. Like, it, we would be hard pressed to run out of value from here. The File? Yeah. But the File doesn't really kill the 6 9, right? Like, the file, like, maybe if they have some cool combo with it, but as it stands, 
They could do, um... They could do, uh... Maybe? Imp Gang Boss? Let me think if that would work, actually. They play Imp Gang Boss. They trade the Tainted Zealot in to hit the Divine Shield. The first Defile is 2 damage. So Defile goes... 1 hit, 2 hit, 3 hit... 4 hit... 5 hit... And then 6... So, we- even in that case, it wouldn't clear the board. Am I mark-shotting my own 1-1? One -one? <laughs> For lethal? I guess I am. This side we mark-shot a 1-1, one -one, it's just our own. That's enough, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Barely. It would be... It would have been pretty sad to miss Lethal out of the Discovery. Five and one! Very nice. Very good. I like where we're going with this. I'm gonna take a quick break to warm up some leftovers. But we're gonna find out... ...whether this deck gets 12. I think it has a real shot at 12. And I would be disappointed if we missed Infinite. Because pretty much every game has felt really good, and our only loss came on the back of some some uh, extreme aggression antics from another hunter. So we'll see.
All right, I'm back. What's up, Trash Queen? Great Poupon. What's going on here in the chat? Some antics? Some fun times? Honestly, a freezing trap on like a lingering zombie or something. Could hit the spot. Um... Yeah, given the other options for things to play on too, I think we're a bit hard up. <laughs> yeah, I'll try to play rock. Text based rock, paper, scissors. Bobby meets Yoshi in the wild. Oh. Okay, I think I have an idea for this one. That's a great freezing trap target, by the way. Dude, what? What? What the hell? Oh, yeah, okay. I thought that was coming out of nowhere. I was like, what? I'm looking back at Trash Queen's combat, though. I see. See here. Let's actually do it this way. Coin rats. And then we take the 5 3 off the board. So we got a bunch of 1 1s out to get buffed by Hope if that's the route we go. Alright, I need a reference material for this.
Well, I'm sure glad you made the effort, World Cry. I do appreciate it. Real nice Keltha loss here. We do it with good tempo. Good thing too, because we are dying. Maybe I could try some... try some colored pencil today. Some pencil brush... brush strokes? Could be interesting. Another Park Panther? Okay. We're in a bit of trouble here. Maybe Sunwell can get us some healing or something. This is gonna be unplayable. That needs to happen. Mark shot? I'll play a mark shot and then get a rat down. I like that actually. Ramming mount, deadly shot. So ramming mount's the best card here by by a long shot, but I, I think we want deadly if we're going to like basically from this point we have to keep removing every damn thing they play. I didn't know that about the phone being more expensive. I had no idea. We are in don't die mode. Another guard, that's good. <clears throat> In fact, I think I will just play one of these guards now. And I will even trade that. Just... in case. Yep, yep. An alarming amount of stuff. And it's the kind of stuff that we really have no way of ever clearing, so... Probably just playing a bunch of taunts and smorking. Which is good too. Now there's three chunky taunts here that they have to get through if they want to be pushing damage. If they gullied it now. Don't... Don't spectacular me, man. That makes me anxious. Okay. So far, so fine. 13, 14. I think we're good. Thanks! I grew it myself. You know, we will never be equal. Some have mustaches and some don't. Easy game.
Al egg. I don't think we wanted to start with Bal egg. Um, I'm about a week, maybe a week and a half out from my last trim. So I do trim it. Uh, it grows in pretty well. I don't really have complaints. I, I trim my neck stuff, my cheeks, and like under my nose. <laughs> it came back anyway. Okay, fine, if you insist. You really want to be here. <laughs> don't start with me, egg. Yeah, I'll play a candle shot. Honestly, not bad as far as top decks in this situation go. Here's here, this is where I get a little bit tangled up. Uh, I don't know whether to go with the stats for the Huntress or go with the Discover for the Vizier. Vizier could have upside when an Undead dies, but this could have upside when we draw a uh, Secret, of which we have two. I guess we'll go Vizier here. Maybe find something for next turn or so. Free Freezing Trap? I guess I'll take that. I mean, it is a Death Knight, so they can always hero power, but... If we do it early enough, such as next turn, I think it could make a lot of sense. Make it at least a little bit inconvenient for them to... Rock it. Bobby, you ate a high-sodium dinner last night. True? However, that's no strong feat of prediction given that I eat a high sodium dinner pretty much every night. <laughs> Not a particularly impressive claim. You will be coming into a sum of money in your future. That's a pretty safe one, too. For everyone but me. This is a bluff. By the way. Thank you for the gifted sub, the cuties XD. CJ just couldn't stay away with his gifted subs. I lost the challenge today and he still had to express his generosity. That's a determined viewer right there. He just pulled up. Better than just pulling out. Glad to have you.
Two, one, and one. Two, one, one. I think this is the best way to buff. I assume that's the worst result. Like, could you possibly get a worse result than this? I should think not. Oh well. <laughs> One out of seven. If you want to express that you are a cutie in the chat, there's an emote for that. There's an emote for that, y'all. Bro? <laughs> what? Hand? Here's what we're doing, chat. Believe it or not. Die, boar. <laughs> Die, you piece. Yeah, it actually rewarded. It was totally worth it to get a 4-5 down, in my opinion. Defrost. You really, really, really are, are trying to cheese me off, aren't you? Play a minion! God damn it! Guess we do we have to do this? A 2-5 on the board right now, does it really help us that much? Such a weak turn, I mean, good thing we were so far ahead. One more death can't hurt. We did it. Good evening, Bang Adjuster. Good evening. Uh, do you keep hope? I do you give do you give hope a chance? Let's try it. Hi. Here. Come here. Hello, everybody. Hello.
It's happened before. I could play that for free next turn. I wonder if I just hold it. Is it actually just correct to hold it? In case they play something that we don't want to... I guess it's worth the freeze here. Bishop says hello to you all. He's very pliable today. Very pliable. Good, I was hoping to be annoying enough to him that he would decide to leave. <laughs> I love him, but it's hard to stream with him on my lap for a while. Alright, well, good enough. Good enough, and we'll have a good guard next turn going into a good weapon, so... And if we should miss that opportunity to guard, I guess we could... Go ahead and doggy biscuit. Sure is. Bit of a shame to trade all that in, but the results are good. This would be Super Metroid, yes. Lower Brinstar. Just play. This is like getting a lot of value. They're, they're taking this so slowly. I'm very happy to hope here. They're letting us get all the breaking points just to, to collect stuff. So that means that they get scary in a in a in a few turns, but it'll probably be too late, yeah.
So, 10, 11, 15, 16, 17. We have just have lethal. Wow. Yeah, some of these games are so blessedly easy. I, I, like, I'd say over half these opponents we just whooped. And the other ones, we're, we're just trying to stay alive long enough to pull ahead. Where I do these spots... Hey, okay, Kendall shot on one, always happy to see that. These options, yikes. Um, I could take Parrot. How many Death Rattles do we actually have? We have one, we have... Two, and we have three, and we have four total? Take Parrot. We need any alcohol. We have a bit of rum. Maybe a sip of vodka. I think that's about it. So if you want something more hand size drinkable, then you'd probably have to grab it. I'll take Parrot. Eventually we'll be able to use it, right? Yes, please. You know, if I thought a little bit, we could have seen that Web Spinner lets us get a bigger merchant this turn, but not sure if that's super important. Snake Trap. We could coin Snake Trap now. Or Venom Strike, but I think at this juncture of the game, Snake Trap's a little better. We drew a parrot before we drew a death rattle. Who? We go lion's guard here. 
Your drawing's very sad to me. It makes me think of young kids in World War One. That's a... That's a very funny observation. I wouldn't have thought of that. Not ha-ha funny. Yeah, run back must die. Well, we got a ways to go yet with the drawing, so... I'm gonna take my damn time on this one. My concept requires it. I think the guard is a... It's quite a nice pickup here. Makes this breaking point a whole lot better. Is that something we're interested in killing? I really don't think it is. But I am interested in playing a bunch of secrets here. <laughs> we could do double secret with... Nerubian. I guess I'll say that's worth it with the caveat that we're gonna be kind of out of playable things. That's fine, we have conjured arrows, so... We'll just sort of... Post on that vibe. We actually drew the hope. Which is cool. Um... I'm sure I've got lethal. I haven't seen the board yet. Okay. Ah! Oh, what the heck? I guess I don't. I'm sure I don't have lethal. I have seen the board. Start with a card draw? I actually drew a death rattle. Minion only? Yeah, this does not go face, otherwise we'd be set. All good. That's what I'm here to know, and for you to find out. Four, five, six. Um, let's just do it this way. 
I would like to put them to two here, so we could have played four and six, but... I don't love that as much. Nice tap, dummy. You didn't know it'd kill you. <laughs> that is a big life steal. Holy cow, I'm glad the game ended when it did. <laughs> oh, man. They were prepping for that, for sure. Trying to slam that down. That's why you gotta have high tempo. Don't let them do what they want, chat. Don't let them do what they want. It's dope. <sighs> um, let us throw all or maybe keep rodent nest. I think rodent nest is kind of a nice keep. I guess I'm okay with that draw. Um, I... I don't think them paying is... Is that worth being afraid of? I'll hit in anyway. So they probably have a pretty good read that it's not Freezing Trap now that we've done that. Save them two mana? No, it saves two health on our poison. It's a, it's a trade off I'm very happy about because it means our poison survives here. No, well, you could always coin ping. So you see, in fact, it didn't save them two mana. It cost them some tempo, two mana, and a coin. Really not thrilled about this line either because they could just trade an AoE so easily, but. <laughs> Don't go giving me a big head. I'm already good on that department. I don't draw in pencil a lot because it's much more difficult than my typical tool. Very, very much painstaking. 
But this one, worth it. Sandbinder? Hmm. Hundred arrow or sunwell. Cards from our deck are random cards. Cards from our deck are pretty good. Sunwell can get you a high roll something. We'll go sunwell. I don't think it'd be crazy to just use one arrow there. You mean that other turn before they were active? I don't think it would be crazy, per se, but I also don't think we needed to do it. They discovered something. Um, I think we can rats this turn. Then this, and then, um, and then just play a rat. And if they have AoE, we just refill with a bunch of rats. I think we're spanking this mage. <clears throat> okay. That would have been a reason to trade the 1-3. The I couldn't think of one, but that would have been one. Impossible to think of, of course, because you never anticipate a Chaos Nova, but... Okay, here... Oh boy, this is a bit monka s. I don't think we ever kill it, but... but I do want to hedge my, my bets here and not overcommit. Nine cards in hand. And that's why we were not overcommitting. Yeah. <laughs> they see the writing on the wall. I mean, we were gonna win this one, I'm sure. I don't blame them for not wanting to play the rest. But if they like spankings. Then I guess I'm happy to have shown somebody a good time.
<laughs> I did not notice that they only had two health. <laughs> Wait, what? Hen and one? Ooh. They should all be destroyed. Trouble finding a po an opponent for the old Blobster? No opponents for Blobby? Hey, 
Can't find an opponent for Blobby? <laughs> Sounds nice, John. <clears throat> this reminds me of my days playing COD, more time spent in the lobby talking shit than playing the game. Are you excited about Hogwarts Legacy video, Blobby? I think I couldn't possibly be less excited about any video game than I'm excited about Hogwarts Legacy. Name a video game that's not out yet. I'll be more excited about it than I will be for Hogwarts Legacy. Cookie Collector 7? Hell yeah. Dude, I'm more excited about Overwatch 2 than Hogwarts Legacy. Hogwarts is the shit blobby? Nope. Cube. <laughs> nah, I've always hated Harry Potter. The world is only just starting to catch up to me. Yo, I'm excited for Cube, though. So you kill Yoshi and you hate Harry Potter? Hey, man. First of all... First of all... I haven't finished the painting, so you have no clue what's happening. Yeah, let's restart the queue. Second of all, you don't want to get... If you have love in your heart for Harry Potter, you don't want me to get me talking about Harry Potter. I promise you that. <laughs> Y'all you, are trying to bait me, but I'll give you one more chance to opt out. <laughs> it says it in the description? No, no, no. Where does it say... Blobby killed Yoshi in the description? Yeah. <laughs> By the gun, you have to wait till I'm done. The art's not made yet. You can't possibly have questions about it because it's not. It isn't. It doesn't exist yet. Film rating, Harry Potter of your choice. Okay. Mm. Deathly Hallows Part 1, 1 out of 5 blobs. They hang out in the woods for a while. Have some arguments with each other. Pretty boring. But the gun exists? Yeah, but nothing means anything until you understand this context. A gun in and of itself is not even a gun. It could be non-functional gun. It could be a bunch of spare parts. It could be a fake gun. It's all about the context. Dude, they don't want to give me an opponent. I, I knew CJ would figure it out. <laughs> I knew CJ would figure it out. It's, it's, I didn't give myself an easy task here, and I also kind of dunked up the proportions, but Indeed, Utopanomicon.
<laughs> Keep everything but the marked. Dude. Okay, you fucking pushed me over the edge. You can't shame me for being a Harry Potter hater when the spearheader of Harry Potter is the most prominent transphobe in the world. You can't high-road me because I don't like Harry Potter. The tables have turned, friends. The tables have turned. Harry Potter is fucking tainted by J.K. Rowling's bigotry and furthermore has always been tainted by her bigotry even before she came out as a transphobe because she wrote her transphobic ideas into the stories and she wrote, she wrote her racism and misogyny into the stories as well and she wrote her lazy ass pro-capitalism laissez-faire neoliberalism into the stories as well. For all these reasons and more I've always resented the love for Harry Potter. And only now are people starting to catch up a little bit to like, Oh yeah, that's a really racist name she gave to that character. Oh yeah, all the goblins are like hook-nosed bankers. That's a Jewish stereotype that's really ugly actually. Oh yeah, guess what? Hogwarts Legacy is about quelling a liberation uprising. Violently, you as the protagonist, as the hero, are violently quelling people who don't want to be fucking exploited slaves. And... Harry Potter becomes a cop when he grows up. So. Anyone else want to high road me about Harry Potter? Yes, I'm a Harry Potter hater. And I'm proud to be. I want to be a cop? Then fuck you. No offense. A cab. Cops can be awesome? Nope. Unless you're talking about Robocop. I'll give you Robocop. But the only reason Robocop is awesome is because the cops fucked him over and killed him. So he's actually based. I think we want this buff here so that we could take the value trade. We didn't even really have to take that value trade. We could have gone face, but... The gunman looks like the man with the yellow hat. You, you make a good point there, actually. <laughs> Is this how he got Curious George for the juggle? <laughs> I, I tried to resist because I, I, I genuinely am not trying to ruin anybody's fun. And I also wouldn't tell anyone that they're not allowed to enjoy Harry Potter. That's not my speed. But it is worth an occasional reminder why the politics of it are shite. I don't know how I'm gonna draw the rest of this, to be honest. I've kind of hit a wall here. I'll figure it out. <clears throat> Robocop, 4.5 out of 5 blobs. Fantastic movie. Robocop is sort of like a curative to Copaganda. Um, I want to try to get more bigger rats, so let me put these rats on the board so that my rats will be better rats. Robocop is a Paul Verhoeven movie. Paul Verhoeven, love that guy. He, he's one of the best, most prominent satirists working in film. Has had an incredible career. Anti-capitalist stuff, like really um, great satire of our world. God damn it, Treadlord. You foiled me. You foiled me. Guess we gotta kill like this. We should have drawn first, that's my bad. 
Like, if we draw into a marked shot, we'll be a bit sad. But I guess this is better tempo than marked shot anyway. Um, I love Verhoeven, I love his work. Robocop is a classic. Uh, it, his movies are often very funny, too. Like, the, the design of the ED-209 robot versus the human robot hybrid of Robocop is really funny. The idea that it can be thwarted by stairs is really funny. Um, he's, he's always very good at world building, giving us windows into a world. I think we just go face here, actually, if we're going to draw that. Giving us all sorts of windows into not only the parts of the world where the story takes place, but the culture around them. I love Robopop. Robo- I love Robopop, and I love Robocop. The, um... Oh, that's bad. Oh, that's very bad. We just got fucking owned. We can find lethal still? You ever play a rat trap here? You could also... Strike. Um... Right. Right, 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 right. Okay. We got through. Yeah, the original Robocop. I have not seen the remake, that's for sure. Your points about Harry Potter are valid makes me sad, though. My thing about it is, and like, there's been plenty of artists who make work that I love, who have fallen from grace in ways that we have to acknowledge. Most recently, the, actually, there have just been two, very recently. Andrew Callahan, who does Channel 5 News. And Justin Roiland, who is a Rick and Morty creator, slash voice actor. Um... Those are some really prominent recent examples of people who have made stuff that I love. Who ain't all that... ...privately. I don't think that means we have to stop loving... ...what they've made. But we do have to... Like, if we're gonna be responsible... stewards of... ...culture and community and society, we, we have to approach with clear eyes their work, given what we learn about them, right? We could potentially quiver into Conjured Arrow into Shock Spitter, but we actually can't because we wouldn't have enough mana. We could take Devouring Swarm just to kill something. One, two, three, four, five, six, leave them two off lethal. We could go random. Didn't work. Son of a... Missed hero power. That's not good. Okay. That's also why I was trying to avoid the rant. <laughs> If you were to enjoy Harry Potter, it wouldn't mean you support her transphobic tendencies. You can disagree with and disapprove of some of JK's writings, but that doesn't mean wizardry isn't fun and cool as heck. It's true, but JK Rowling also created a universe in which the slaves like being slaves. And that's a huge problem. They didn't try to go face? Am I reading that right? 
And there are all sorts of problems with the work itself, not just JK Rowling. But I don't even think that means you can't enjoy the work. Um, I just think it means we have to be aware. Uh, like, I can watch Dirty Harry and enjoy Dirty Harry even though it's about a fascist cop. Sometimes I enjoy a, a, a piece of copaganda every now and then. But we just have to be aware. Wow, we're gonna lose this game unless we get King Crush? That's not... King Crush. You know how elves are enslaved and they're really, like, happy to be enslaved? And the only person in all of the Harry Potter universe who is against the enslavement of elves is Hermione and how she gets kind of made fun of for even caring about that sort of thing consistently. And how Hermione is the character who J.K. Rowling singled out as saying, well, she might be black, well, in a really shallow and pedantic play at diversity. But then it becomes really problematic, and you see the, the issue with diversity and thoughtless representation. It becomes problematic when you're like, okay, sure, what if Hermione is black? That means the only black character is the only character who's against slavery, even the slaves themselves aren't against it. Etc, etc. I don't really see an out here. Sunwell would be... Four mana? I mean, but then what would we even get for two? Yeah, we're just screwed here, and there's nothing in our deck. I don't think... Well, Shock Spitter might, actually. No. Oh well. GG's. It was a good game. I messed up a little bit, but it's okay. Weasel Tunneler does not equal King Crush, is true. What happened with Royland? I saw he left Rick and Morty. Yeah, he didn't leave Rick and Morty, he got booted. Um... What happened with him is, uh... Battery, I believe? Domestic abuse? As well as a whole lot of private messages of him, like, saying really creepy things to people. Okay, that's approximately equals. Similar to a certain R&B artist who made some of our favorite songs about love. I don't know who you're referring to, but that could probably refer to a lot of people, unfortunately. But it, it is the sad truth that the work of the artist very, very often exceeds the artist themselves. You could, you could see it as sad, but you could also see it as liberating in a way. Because you don't have to have a biographical relationship with artists. In fact, you probably shouldn't. It's true of philosophers as well. Every sort of writer or thinker. Oftentimes their work exceeds themselves. And you have to carry with you the best impulses from their work and reject all the worst ones. Alec coming back again. Not a bad hand. Yeah, artists are not the equivalent of their art. Their politics are never a one-to-one -one match. But it's important to see how those politics impact the work. 
For example, the transphobia exists buried in Harry Potter as well. You could consider the little world building detail that in the girl's dormitory, there's a flight of stairs that becomes a ramp whenever boys try to use it. Which sounds innocuous enough if you're like a kid reading it, you're like, oh, that's cool, that's a magical staircase. Um, Deadly Shot's okay. But when you consider the implications of that, you, you have a staircase that is reading, sort of like the Sorting Hat, that is reading some sort of inherent quality in the individual. So it's a staircase that treats gender as physiognomically inherent. As people reading way too much into it? I don't think so. I think people who claim that you're reading way too much into art when you're making an interpretation of it would rather repress the interpretations that's there than engage with them. I'm all about engaging with all this sort of thing. It's not really reading way too much into it. You have a staircase that actively discriminates metaphysically based Number on your gender. Hey, thank you for the sub, Gary Glaive. So, you have a universe in which magic can read the inherent gender of someone, that's, that's, that is an actively anti-trans sentiment. It's, it's very much aligned with a lot of what TERFs are saying about safe spaces for women. You know, it's, it's always this line about, we're trying to keep women-only spaces safe such as restrooms or whatever, that gets used against transness politically. It, it doesn't matter what she's thinking about when she's writing it. It couldn't matter less, you know, death of the author and all that. I'm saying it's there in the work itself. It has nothing to do with her intention. I guess we do this. But yeah, it's, it's very much aligned with a lot of the things that she's come out and said about the importance of women-only spaces. In fact, she recently... made... she recently, um... like, bankrolled a women's shelter? This was kind of in the news cycle. She bankrolled a women's shelter... with a, a group of other cis women. And the concept of the women's shelter is that men aren't allowed. It's starting to sound a little bit like the girls' dormitory, girl's dormitory in Harry Potter, isn't it? Men are not allowed in this women's shelter. Presumably they mean what they call biological men. So what's problematic about that? Well, you're, you're making a shelter that is going to deliberately turn away women in need just because of their genitalia. And you're also making a women's shelter that is going to disallow women with male children to get help. And you're doing it all just out of anti-trans pettiness. And also, your board of directors is, like, extremely, uh, connected to all sorts of hate groups. So, this is just, like, another example of how Patterns in someone's politics can inform both their art and their life. And you can draw connections between those patterns, even though they aren't exactly the same thing. Um, what do we want to accomplish here? Hit. We could go this. We could go this. 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 That's pretty good. I think this is a universal experience. Our best thoughts and ideals are always in some way aspirational for us, not already realized in our person. Mm-hmm. 
As a fan of Lovecraft's work, I really have to lean into the whole death of the author thing. It's a great example. Lovecraft is an author who I actually like. But he's just like the most racist guy you could possibly imagine. So, do you totally dismiss the entirety of the body of work of Lovecraft? I don't believe you have to. Other people might feel differently. I don't believe you have to. But... You can no longer, upon learning of his really flagrant racism, you can no longer read a story of his and look at his treatment of native people uncritically. You, you just have to look at it critically as you're reading. And you can still enjoy his work, but you gotta in some way graf grapple with the idea of othering and the way that he others native peoples as a way of like creating this mystique around his horror and etc etc spell hunter is right it's a very fun hunter archetype here we never run out of stuff i guess we could do this Good lord, so strong. Your granddad's probably the most racist guy you could imagine. He and Lovecraft could have a little... Have some fisticuffs for the title. <laughs> I mean, did your granddad name his cat after the n-word? Because that's the level of racism we're talking about with Lovecraft. Holy moly. Marogar, crap. Do we know what Lovecraft did in real life? Yeah, he named his cat after the N-word. Do you mean, like, for a job? Two, four, seven. This is so bad, chat. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Stone at the 3 3. Son of a bitch! <sighs> they would have been fine if it didn't hit the 3 3! That was his? That was his what? His cat? What are you talking about, Frowdy Frog? You just come out and say your argument if you have one. Are you talking about Marogar was his? Yo, it would have been fine if we hit one of the big ones, too. That's the sad part here. But we can't really Freezing Trap, because if Marogar goes back into their hand, it just kills us later. Um, we could... what? We could what? I think we're just doomed. Oh, I can't believe we lost this! We were winning so good! But, you get up to 10 wins, you face Marogar, it happens. Yeah, I'm not really seeing- they could mess up with Freezing Trap, right? That's the- that's the way, right? That's the way we get them. 
They could mess up. That actually does 5 damage, which I didn't realize, but... But it doesn't matter, right? Because we can't do that and... Well, I get kill... God damn it. Twelve? Technically? I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'm sure that they have lethal. But... Uh, yeah, I know it's an uncomfortable thing to talk about, and I, I appreciate you all bearing with me. As we end up talking about it again and again. But I think JK Rowling is... A really helpful synthesis for a lot of things that are happening... In our culture and our understanding of ourselves and... What we even believe about identity in the first place. And the relationship between humans and the art that they make. Lovecraft was 9 year old when they got that cat. Dude, if you can read a Lovecraft story and not notice the flagrant racism on display, then you have a lot that you need to learn about white supremacy. It's a huge blind spot for you if you can read Lovecraft and not acknowledge that he is one of the most explicitly racist authors still in our collective consciousness. So you going back to the deep tissue biographical data of Lovecraft just to prove that his n-word cat was acquired by him at 9 years old, thus somehow absolving him of racism, is totally not worth it and is only diluting the conversation. It's just a really, really weak argument. So don't do that. <laughs> Didn't know anything, read articles, compiling JK Rowling tweets didn't really seem transphobic to me unless I'm missing something. If you believe me about one thing, believe me that JK Rowling is transphobic. There have been about 100 dog whistles and 100 whatever's the next step past dog whistle. So like, if you can look at what she's been saying and not see that she's transphobic, then you also have a huge blind spot. But like, I see her tweets, it's like, literally every week. I saw one two days ago, that is like... ...attacking the trans community, so... It's just kind of her identity, you know? Imagine that! Being able to update your identity for your changing thoughts and ideas, the ways of being. I actually haven't seen Waterworld.